Um, in today's lecture, we study what is multiple intelligence, what is the Strachan theory, what is the Sternberg theory. Um, in computer psychology and neuroscience, we have different type of intelligence. Some of us has mathematical, analytical intelligence. Other ones have logistic. Other ones have special perception, interpersonal, interpersonal skill, natural intelligence. All those different types of intelligence influences who we are, how we're able to think, and how we correlate to the external environment. Behavior, emotions, that all plays a huge part of memory development and intelligence. When we study the human brain, we're understanding the different pathways, cognitive mechanism, the algorithms that connect all the different types of nodes in the brain. That's also known as sarcasm. Sarcasm is actually the gaze and concentration of the person to the human brain. How we're able to gaze, how we're able to interact, how we're able to retain information. That is what sarcasm is. It's also compared to an algorithm. An algorithm is a connection between all the different nodes. Um, this research actually talks about all the different types of intelligence. We have what is called creative intelligence, and analytical intelligence, and practical intelligence. A lot of it comes to the way we're able to perceive knowledge, how we think. Genetic DNA plays a key to the development of our IQ, memory, intelligence, intelligence quotidian. We have intellectualism, we have intellectual, we have em emotional intelligence. So many different type of concepts that affect who, who we are and how we perceive and how we relate to the external stimulus. All that is critical when it comes to developing the human brain. Um, in today's research, we actually look at what is known as different type of models that explain what intelligence is, what is language acquisition, what is sep what is perception, what is long-term memory, what is short-term memory. Long-term memory is built when we increase in knowledge, in intellectual, in reading, in analysis, in doing mathematical equations and doing scientific models, it all increases in the gray matter and white matter. We, we are able to perceive things on a bigger perspective. That's what intelligence does to the human brain. That's why it is important to keep growing intellectual, to do study, to do research. Um, a lot of great uh, scholars like Einstein, Maxwell, Blank, Bohr, they all had great theories on relativity theory, what is quantum physics, what is um, the different levels of quantum physics that is expressing to an end, similar as a node. All those different intellectual scholars were able to create methodologies that now can make a huge impact in today's economy and development of innovation and creativity. For example, we have Einstein. Einstein's brain is the corpus collapse and connects the right and left hemisphere. But Einstein's brain, one side was bigger than the other, and that's why he could solve mathematical equation. But he did his equation in a simplistic mean, in a simplistic way, that people can actually understand E equals MC squared. He also did score high in mathematics and science, um, huge disciples that we should improve more and, and create more models and methodologies and influence others to lean more to the mathematics and science. Bohr was more into quantum physics, and then Plan was more into quantum physics. How we all correlate to science? We have different disciplines, A, B, and C. We have cognitive psychology, we have neuroscience, and we have what is known as quantum physics. Quantum physics, the ability, we're able to correlate all the different types of disciplines into nodes, into an algorithm, into a sarcasm. Cognitive psychology, neuroscience, this study the human brain. Now we have quantum physics. Quantum physics explains the attraction the formula that unites all those three disciplines. The equation that why similar mindsets attract different similar mindsets or why similar personalities attract the same type of wave patterns and, and wave patterns and moleculars and photons. It's a whole set of disciplines that are put together and that influences how we think, how we behave, and how we're able to respond in today's world. For example, we have this huge, huge impact on 
neuroscience and cognitive psychology and quantum physics. We can make huge and great innovation, develop models, methodologies. We can influence people and we can understand how they behave, how they're able to react to external stimulus. A natural intelligence is very rare to find. Natural intelligence, I, I think mine is a little, well, my, my memory is very photographic, so I'm able to see page numbers, equations, but that's a blessing from God. I know that I'm very grateful, and I know that I'm not going to be able to perform in a very close environment. It has to be very intellectual, stimulating, creative, the right personas. Um, the way we're able to think, the way we're influenced our decisions, our research, our models, it influence a whole set of components that makes the world fascinating and interesting. We have methodologies A, B, C, and D. And all those three AB methodologies connect in such a way that relate on the same type of concept and model. What I love about the human brain is the ability to understand how intelligence is formed, what is intelligence quotient, well, what is intellectualism, what is special perception, what is perception, what is emotional intelligence, what, what is what is all the different neurotransmitters, the molecules, and how does that respond and how it help us become who we are? How does genetic influence the way we think? How does behavior influence the way we're able to think? How people we relate to influence how we think? Creative environment, external stimulus, genetic DNA always plays a huge impact on who we are and how we think. Our ability to have a photographic memory, our ability to think on a scientific basis, and our ability to think on a math basis. It's all a huge set of components. I know it's, it's sometimes we, we don't want to keep pushing ourselves intellectually, but it is important to grow intellectually, to develop a human brain and to be able to push others to to do to to discover things innovation make innovation possible the two keys disciples that are very important for the economic growth is understanding strong understanding of what mathematics is statistics algorithms logarithms quadratic equations ANCOVA ANOVA all those different type of methodologies that are going to help us predict our GDP, our profession, our progression, our population, the histogram, the distribution, that are going to help us see all those different type of uh, type of correlations in, in today's in correlations in the analysis. Now, science, cognitive psychology, neuroscience. They make a huge, huge impact on today's innovation and economy. So two huge disciples that are going to be make a huge difference in innovation and creativity, cognitive psychology, neuroscience, mathematics. They're all going to play a huge impact on the development of innovation and creativity. Yeah.